In this video lecture, we'll be reviewing the pharmacological treatments used to treat schizophrenia and other psychotic disorders. We're going to talk about two different major classes of antipsychotic medications, typical antipsychotics and the atypical antipsychotics. The typical antipsychotics are sometimes also referred to as neuroleptics. You may also hear them referred to as first generation antipsychotics. So they're called first generation or typical antipsychotics because this was the first class of medication that was identified and used for the treatment of psychotic disorders. It includes medications like Haldol and Thorazine. And the way that these typical antipsychotics work and decrease psychotic symptoms is by reducing dopamine levels throughout the brain. These typical antipsychotics are particularly effective for reducing the positive symptoms of psychotic disorders. So we see a reduction in delusions, hallucinations, and disorganized behavior, but they tend to be less effective for addressing the negative symptoms of psychosis, for example, a volition and a loja. These typical antipsychotics um, can have some pretty significant side effects, um, and many of these side effects affect um, motor behavior. So one side effect of the typical antipsychotics is akinesia, and this refers to slowed motor behavior. You might see this in terms of physical voluntary motor behavior. So one term that emerged um, when these typical antipsychotics began to be used doctors would refer to something that they called the Haldol shuffle. This was a characteristic gait of individuals who were taking these typical antipsychotic medications, and it's characterized by slow, very short, halting steps, and often the individual is not lifting their feet very high off the floor. So for example, they might have trouble getting over a door frame um, where you have kind of a, a low barrier kind of in that door frame where you have a seam in the doorway between one room and another room. Because the individual is not lifting their feet very high off the floor, they might get tripped up even by that very low barrier. So we can have this slowed motor behavior. You can also observe this akinesia in uh, decreased uh, speech uh, fluency and speed and also reduced facial expressiveness. Um, and sometimes this can be difficult to distinguish from those negative symptoms of the psychotic disorder itself, where we can also see the decreased fluency of speech and restricted affective expression. Um, another uh, motor symptom that you can see are Parkinson's-like symptoms. So you can see um, physical symptoms like tremor or freezing. We can also see akathesis, which is agitation, sometimes manifests as pacing or an inability to sit still. So you're seeing this psychomotor agitation similar to what you might see in depression or other disorders. Um, so you're seeing this side effect of the medication that an individual is unable to sit still. They have a lot of kind of physical motor energy um, that they are not able to control. And then a final significant side effect is a symptom called tardive dyskinesia. This can be a really um, severe and um, problematic side effect. So tardive dyskinesia refers to involuntary movements of the face or jaw. So it might involve smacking the lips or opening and closing the mouth or repeatedly sticking out the tongue. Um, and an important thing about tardive dyskinesia as a side effect of typical antipsychotics is that if the medication is not discontinued very shortly after the emergence of this side effect, the tardive dyskinesia can become permanent. So even if the individual is then taken off of the medication, they may continue to have these significant side effects um, even though they've been taken off of the medication. So this can be a really significant consequence of these typical antipsychotic medications. Um, and people need to be really closely monitored for the emergence of these motor side effects, particularly tardive dyskinesia. So the typical antipsychotics, even though they are effective for treating psychotic symptoms, particularly those positive symptoms, tend not to be our first line of treatment anymore. And often it's because of these significant side effects. So as you can imagine, these side effects would be distressing to people experiencing them. And they're also very visible to other people. So these observable changes to motor behavior 
these changes to speech and facial expression and these um, involuntary movements of the face or jaw um, are very visible to others. So the first line treatment currently for psychosis tends to be the atypical or what are sometimes called our second generation antipsychotics. Um, so this is a set of medications that affect dopamine and also serotonin. The different atypical antipsychotics work slightly differently from one another. Some of them work by moderating dopamine receptors in the brain more selectively compared to the typical antipsychotic medications. Other atypical antipsychotics um, act on multiple um, neurotransmitters. So for example, Zyprexa works to stabilize levels of both dopamine and serotonin. So they all affect dopamine, but the mechanism of action is slightly different compared to our typical or first generation antipsychotic medications. In comparison to our first generation antipsychotics, uh, the atypical antipsychotics tend to be a bit better at reducing negative symptoms in addition to reducing the positive symptoms. And they also tend to have a more favorable side effect profile. So they do have side effects and some of their side effects are um, significant, but they tend to have fewer motor side effects. So the most common side effects of the atypical antipsychotics are sedation, dizziness and nausea. Another common side effect is weight gain. Um, and the long-term side effects of these atypical antipsychotics can include physical conditions related to that weight gain. So for example, increased risk for metabolic syndrome, for cardiac difficulties, and type 2 diabetes. So often our atypical antipsychotics are a first-line treatment for psychosis, both because they have fewer side effects and side effects that are better tolerated than those uh, motor side effects, and also because they tend to be more effective both for positive and negative symptoms. However, both typical and atypical antipsychotics are both currently used for treating psychotic disorders. So often an atypical antipsychotic will be a first line treatment, but if an individual does not respond to an atypical antipsychotic, if they cannot take atypical antipsychotic medication, or if their symptoms, particularly positive symptoms, are not well controlled, they might take a typical or first generation antipsychotic instead or in addition to an atypical antipsychotic. So I'm gonna show you results from one large randomized controlled trial looking at the efficacy of antipsychotic medication. Um, so this is findings from a study of 227 adults with schizophrenia or another psychotic disorder. And all of the patients in this study had received antipsychotic medication with at least one medication that they had not responded to. So they were going to be changed to a different medication. So in this study, they were randomly assigned to receive either a typical or first generation antipsychotic or a atypical or second generation antipsychotic. And here, these are results of the study. Uh, they followed the patients in the study for one year. And these are results of a scale looking at symptoms of psychosis. And this scale measures both positive and negative symptoms. And you can see that in both of these groups, there's a significant improvement in positive and negative symptoms of psychosis over the year after they were switched to the new medication. And the study actually found no significant difference in symptoms and symptom improvement between the participants who received the typical antipsychotic medication and the patients who received the atypical antipsychotic medication. So um, in, uh, in contrast to other studies which showed that the atypical antipsychotics were more effective than the typical antipsychotics for negative symptoms, this study did not actually find that that difference was significant. They also didn't find any differences in symptoms of other disorders. So for example, depressive symptoms and other mood symptoms, the two categories of medication were equally effective. Um, and they also didn't find any significant differences in terms of treatment compliance. So that was really interesting in this study um, and contrasts with findings from other studies that have tended to find that atypical antipsychotics are more effective for the negative symptoms and that you have better treatment compliance because you have lower rates of side effects. 
Another area that they did not observe significant differences in this study was in quality of life. So they followed these patients over a one year period and they assessed them at uh, baseline when they were randomized to receive either the typical or the atypical antipsychotic 12 weeks after they started treatment, 26 weeks, and then after a year. And you can see that in both groups, there was a uh, gradual but significant increase in quality of life over the year after they began the new medication. And in this study, there was no difference between the two groups in this improvement of quality of life. So in general, atypical antipsychotic or second generation antipsychotic medications tend to be our first line of treatment. Um, some studies suggest that they're more effective for the negative symptoms and more tolerated but we also do use our typical antipsychotic medications. And this study suggests that at least for some patients, they may be equally effective, both in terms of reducing symptoms and in terms of improving quality of life.